Okay, so I made this a little bit more complicated than the previous uh, examples. But these problems are still simpler than you would see on the test because I'm already giving you the information processed into a table. So what you need to do on the test is make your own table and process the information. Um, so hopefully you, you still have buried in your notes what the original information was. So you can do this problem again on your own. Um, well, and on the test, how would this have been given? So uh, what was the original information that I gave you? I didn't give you this. I didn't give you this. Uh, this. I just gave us the minus 15 moles and then the N 40 moles for H2 and the N 25 moles. So how would this be given on the test? Well, they would say something like, a reaction begins with 30 moles of nitrogen. It uses up 15 moles of hydrogen gas to produce 40 moles of hydrogen gas. Um, and it also produces 25 moles of ammonia. And then it would be your job to process all of those numbers and decide where they go in the table. You'd have to figure out which of those numbers are starting numbers, which of those numbers are change numbers, and which of the numbers are ending numbers. Uh, that's something we have to do on our own. In fact, the first thing you would have to do is write down the chemical equation and balance it. So we already did a bunch of the work here that you'd actually have to do if this was a real problem. Uh, and again, that's one of the advantages of this approach. Most students, when they do these problems, don't even make a clear distinction in their head between the start, the change, and the end. But the table forces us to do that. I like it. All right, and then we can do these conversions. All right. So this is not like some bizarre new method that I made up. This is a standard chemistry method, but unfortunately, um, most <laughs> instructors have done these so many times that they do the tables in their heads. And then students don't realize where they're getting their answers. So usually, for example, when you look at the answers in your book, they're using this approach, but they're doing a lot of the steps in their heads. Um, and well, when we're learning the material, we have to do it on paper so we can see what we're doing. Okay, so uh, we can use the start, change, end table for that. All right. All right, so the big thing we talked about here was the right order for a unit conversion. First, you have to write the target information and the starting information before you can write the conversion ratio. These are pretty easy unit conversions, right? You know that sometimes you can do a unit conversion with two or three different conversion ratios. But in all those cases, you would start with the starting and the ending information. Also notice, usually, the con so the conversion ratio is a ratio, which means it's a fraction. But the starting and ending information here are not fractions, which is usually the case in a, con in a, in a conversion. So we start with the numbers that are not fractions, and then we put in the conversion. Well, let's start making this more realistic. 